Good morning. This is Riley Brannon here. It is uh, 6.17 in the a.m. Monday, August 8th. And um, we are going to have Up the Nose Bible Hour with Riley Brannon. I'm driving so <clears throat> so I don't break the rules of the road, the laws of the land. I'm going to get my two hands on the wheel. And uh, we're going to we're going to talk about what the Lord's sharing with me this morning. So, there's a verse of Scripture in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. It talks about exercising ourselves unto godliness. Exercising ourselves unto godliness. This is... Um, this is a verse of scripture I often meditate upon. It's a verse of scripture that has spoke to me, really from the beginning of my uh, my disciplined spiritual life. And there's a difference between a Christian who has a disciplined spiritual life and a Christian who doesn't have a disciplined spiritual life. Big difference. Um, and I'll talk about a little bit about that this morning if I can briefly. On my way to work. Um, Exercising ourselves unto godliness. You know, verse 7, Paul says, exercise yourself unto godliness, which is something like saying, discipline your life to become more godly. Um, and then he goes on and says, you know, hey, physical body, because he's speaking to Greeks here who are big about, big on physical exercise, kind of like our culture today. It's all about, all about health and all about taking care of your body, which is good. It's righteous. You know, our body is not our own. It was given to us by God. It's the temple of the Holy Spirit if you're saved. So we should take care of it. I'm not knocking that. But Paul says physical exercise profits a little. Godliness profits much. That's 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. So it's good. It's good to exercise your body a little. So, you know, in a fraction or percentage, it would look something like 75% of your life should be practicing your spiritual life and godliness and 25% of it, or well, let's say in, in two-thirds, which would be 35% or something like that, 33.5 or something like that. Yeah, I'm not I'm not really good at percentages and decimals, even though I use them every day at work. Don't tell my boss. Um, so, it's like, we, we, let's go in a 25% increments. 25% of your life should be physical exercise, maybe a little bit more, um, but the rest of that should be exercising our body. Okay, you know, Paul often takes physical workouts and exercises like running a race and compares them with, with the spiritual life. And this is awesome. This is great because there's so many parallels between the two. When I was in prison, it was 2015, 2000. 14, 15, I think, I think it was. Um, I try not to think about that too much, so I forget the date often. But um, I learned a lot in prison about the spiritual life through my um, my physical exercising life. You know, when when you're lifting weights, you you tear your muscles up, you cause yourself uh, discomfort in order to grow. You know, it's like that sometimes in the spiritual life. The things of the Spirit sometimes make our flesh uncomfortable. But if, if we'll do them by faith, trusting God, being empowered by God, by His Spirit, His grace, we'll grow. You know, but when you exercise physically, you exercise, strain yourself, but then you got to rest. A lot of times, as Christians get caught up in the work, which is biblical, by the way, for by grace you have been saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not as a result of works, lest any man should boast, for you are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, that's Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10, we're, we're created in Christ Jesus for good works, but this is not the source of our salvation, but rather God's grace in us by faith, believing it, and out of this will come a life of works. Sometimes Christians get caught up in works. They get caught up in, you know, 
and it's a righteous thing, but quickly become perverted or excessed. Now, we want to please God, we want to work for God, we want to do for God, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's biblical, but sometimes we can get so much caught up in works that we forget to rest. We forget to rest. And we need to we need to work serving others, but we also need to remember our first ministry, which is the ministry with God. That's that's our first ministry. Resting in Christ, loving Christ. This past Sunday, it's Monday now. Yesterday, our, our service was really kind of centered on that message right there, resting in God. And one of our dear sisters brought the, the uh, let's see, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15. In quietness and rest, is, it's our confidence and it's our strength. You know, your strength in God relies in your resting in God. So, you know, that's one aspect of the spiritual life. We, we must exercise ourselves, but we also must rest in God, allowing Him to pour into us and replenish us and fill us with His Spirit and His grace that we might um, help others and bless them with that same grace and that same Spirit in us. There has to be the inflow so there can be an overflow, that those who partake of our lives will be blessed by the overflow of God in us, His grace and His Spirit so um, there's that. Those are those wonderful parallels. But now I want to talk a little bit about discipline. I'm sure to end this video at 10 minutes, something like that. I think that's what my last video was, is 9. And I'm just about at work too, so that'll be good timing. But um, disciplining ourself, exercising yourself unto godliness. Now when a person exercises, they've, they've got to discipline themselves. They've got to, despite their their feelings and emotions and sometimes their desires, they've got, they've got to just wake up and go do it. And the spiritual life will be the same way. I think one of the, the strengths of my spiritual life is me getting up most mornings, getting up most mornings, um, hours before I have to get ready for work and giving them a large portion of that to God and some other portions of that to get things done. I have run a podcast in light of the truth with Riley Brandon. You can find that on Spotify, app, uh, uh, iTunes, and, and all the other major spot, uh, podcast platforms. And um, I, 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 I'll use that time to do stuff like that, get things done. Um, it's a great time. The morning is a great time to get up because nobody can take those that, those hours from you. Most likely, most people won't take those hours from you because, well, nobody else is awake. <laughs> so. Um, That's probably one of the strengths in my spiritual life is that I get up most mornings and give it to the Lord in prayer and in the study of the scriptures. And I find that um, I find that when I when I discipline the first portion of my day, the rest of my day is disciplined as well. I exercise, practice, and structure the first part of my day. The rest of my day is also structured, practiced, and disciplined. So there's that. But um, you know, we as Christians, we have to give God time. If you're not giving God time, you're not you're not being you're not submitting to God, and you're not then you're not God's not getting greater control of your life. That's the whole purpose of Christianity. See, Christ did it all. When He died on the cross, He said it is finished. He He paid everything. He paid the entire price, and um, all He asks us to do is submit. That's it. Submit. Give God time. So we as Christians, um, we must give God a daily portion of our time. If we're going to grow in grace, we're going to grow in the Spirit. That's submission to God. Consecrating the, uh, uh, the parts of our life that are not in line with His Word. Giving ourselves to Him. This has is, this is, this is probably been the strength in my spiritual life, in my Christian life. Um, but that's a discipline. Just like exercise. In exercise, you've got to rest, but in exercise, sometimes you just got to do what you know to be right, not what feels right. That's a big message for our for today's generation. We, 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 we're existentialists to the extreme. We think uh, that, that true righteousness and truth all is based off of feelings, but um, it's not. Sometimes you have to do what's right regardless of your feelings toward this. So I'm coming to uh, pulling up to my workplace, and I just want to end there. 
exercise yourself into godliness. What's that look like practically? Practically speaking, you, you give God time. And um, in this, I think we'll find uh, a stronger spiritual life. And you know, don't, don't be afraid to structure and discipline your spiritual life. It doesn't, you're not going to, um, there is the, there is the, the, the threat that you would formalize things, um, that you would uh, become so rigid in your structured spiritual life that you'd kind of structure God out of it. If you do anything you do for the love of Christ, anything you do, uh, in faith, anything you do for, um, I'm parked, so I'm going to bring the camera up, anything you do out of love for Christ, from a sincere desire in your heart, God's going to honor it. It doesn't matter how disciplined and structured it is. In fact, with love and structure and discipline, you're going to find a strong spiritual life. So um, I encourage you. You know, it, Sometimes it takes self-denial. Jesus said, Those who wish to come after me must deny themselves, take up their cross daily, and follow me. And that sometimes requires denying our feelings and our emotions and our, our sleepiness and our tiredness and um, requires us just to, to work for God. So I would encourage you and be blessed in Jesus' name.